The last 48 hours for Call of Duty's anti-cheat Ricochet have probably been the most interesting for it that it's had in its entire life cycle. Now, Ricochet, much like pretty much any other anti-cheat on the market right now, has had its fair share of trouble. And generally speaking, the only anti-cheat in the industry that seems to be doing very well is Valorant's Vanguard. Easy Anti-Cheat has suffered scuffles from Apex Legends and the ALGS tournament, which they said wasn't their fault and was an Apex problem. BattleEye has recently had the ability to see players falsely banned, and now Ricochet Anti-Cheat in the last 48 hours has acknowledged for the first time on record false permanent bans that they have said that they have fixed. So it's no surprise that people's attention is turning to Black Ops 6, and what Ricochet Anti-Cheat is going to be doing in the next title to greater address the problem of cheating in the game. And they've actually released a fairly comprehensive blog on brand new features that Black Ops 6 is releasing with Ricochet Anti-Cheat with the intention and commitment to catch a cheater within the first hour of their account being active. This is a very bold statement that Call of Duty are making and for any anti-cheat, arguably a very important one. The idea of permanently banning a cheating account within the first hour is a very successful milestone for any anti-cheat, and if Call of Duty can do this properly, it would greatly reduce the number of accounts cheating in both Black Ops 6 and Call of Duty Warzone. In fact, the general issue with Ricochet anti-cheat is sometimes it seems to peak really, really high and accounts get banned really, really quickly, and other times a lot just seems to get through fundamentally. And the biggest flaw with all of this is a metric known as time to action. How long it takes Ricochet Anti-Cheat to not only find a player, detect a player, and remove them from the game so that they can limit their impact on the wider player base. There's two things I want to address before I go into this blog post around what they're doing in Black Ops 6 and in Warzone. The first and foremost is that the proof is very much in the pudding. We have seen blog post after blog post from Ricochet Anti-Cheat about mitigations that they've put in place, things they're trying to do, and every single time it seems to fall a little bit flat. We went from a company that was actively bragging about their ability to make cheaters get trolled in-game to having cheaters capable of banning players in their own title. So the harsh reality is, as cool as this information is, and as cool as the information that I'm going to show you is, the proof is very much in the pudding. And Black Ops 6 and Warzone need to have a stretch of a good four to five months where this isn't a problem. The second thing I want to address is that this isn't just them saving face with some PR. It would be very easy for me to say that Ricochet just had a big issue and they had to publicly acknowledge it, so they've decided to jingle some keys elsewhere so that somebody doesn't focus on it. In reality, the features that they have described in this blog post have probably taken years of years of development that will likely be introduced into the game and could genuinely breed really successful results if implemented correctly. Ricochet Anti-Cheat of the past has been something that's had to be bolted onto the existing code in Call of Duty. Whereas with newer releases now, like Black Ops 6, arguably there will be a heavier integration with the anti-cheat, more data points for it to use, more things that it can utilize to identify if there's a problem or not a problem. So without further ado, this is what they're looking to do in Black Ops 6 and of course in Warzone. And all of it is an emphasis on time to action. The intention is that they want to be able to attack the entire cheater base within the first hour of them being on their account. This means IP bans, hardware ID bans, this means random prompts for them to enter phone numbers, things that progressively just create hurdle after hurdle. It is very difficult to get a fully functional anti-cheat that is going to catch absolutely everybody. But if you make it efficient so that it catches a high number of people, and the hurdles of creating new accounts only for them to get banned repeatedly within the first hour, ultimately you dissuade people from cheating in your game. If it becomes a hop, skip, and jump every single time these guys want to even log into the game, they are less likely to do it. During the beta weekends for Black Ops 6, they actually tested some of this technology, and in this blog post acknowledged that it actually came in a little too sensitive and a little too hot, which is why you were seeing temporary bans being issued for a large number of accounts during the beta. Now, what I find really interesting about this is that I feel that Call of Duty is now going to be shifting potentially away from a shadow ban system, into a temporary ban system. I think the idea behind all of this is that Call of Duty should have more data and more information to contextualize whether or not somebody is or isn't cheating in game. And with that expansive amount of data through some of the machine learning and AI stuff that they're doing in the game, which we'll talk about later, 
The idea should be that they can shadow ban less people and instead hand out temporary bans to select people when they can verify that their data is correct and that person is or isn't cheating. The fine line between somebody being a very, very good player and somebody being a cheater is actually a pretty fine line generally. But there are certain behaviors and certainly system behaviors and breadcrumbs that they'll leave behind, such as files and injections, that can make this process easier for Ricochet Anti-Cheat to identify who is and isn't cheating. And in the blog, they even recognize that they utilize some player data from CDL high-ranked players who are some of the best in the world to identify when somebody is naturally gifted versus having unnatural assistance. They're also using data specifically from console players only when they're capturing large swathes of data so that they don't have the risk of contaminating their own information base. Granted, there are still some cheats that are available on console, like certain devices that reduce recoil, but this should also fall under that umbrella, and those devices are far less widespread or compromising to an anti-cheat data pool than something like a full PC cheater. During the beta, they said that cheaters were able to complete around 10 multiplayer matches during weekend one before being removed, and then in weekend two, that time was cut down to five. They even go far as to say that in 25% of cases, cheaters were banned in their first game. On top of this, 12,000 accounts were stopped from even accessing the game as they were confirmed to be cheating before they even got into a game. So going into Black Ops 6 on day one, and then into Warzone, there is an updated anti-cheat structure heading into the game. To start with, at base level, there is an updated version of the kernel driver that is deployed across all PC systems that will protect any single title that uses the driver, including Call of Duty Warzone. Granted, we don't know the full ins and outs and the extent of what they mean by an updated kernel driver, but likelihood generally is that it's hopefully going to be a more efficient system that is more capable of finding compromises within the system. All of the existing mitigations are allegedly still going to be existing, but most importantly at the moment, there are two new machine learning systems being deployed in Call of Duty Black Ops 6 and in Warzone a new machine learning behavioral system focused on speed of detection, and a new machine detection model that analyzed gameplay to combat aimbots. So we are seeing the first deployments of data sets that involve artificial intelligence and machine learning to try and combat cheating in Black Ops 6. Allegedly, there will be upgrades when ranked play launches, which include continuous examinations of leaderboards to assume if they are accurate or not, and to make sure that they haven't been compromised by cheating, and there will be a further update on this when ranked play is released, closer to that mode's launch. And for Call of Duty Warzone specifically, they've deployed new mitigations to interrupt cheaters, and there will be a future report to learn about those new tricks. Now, we don't know what those mitigations are going to be. We don't know if they're going to be something in-game or out-of-game that aim to target cheaters and reduce how much they use the title. But at the moment, they generally feel that there are some new items in the field that are making this more effective. So what do I think about all of this? Well, as I reiterated before, there is generally a consensus that the proof is in the pudding and execution is everything here. But there are two striking details about this blog post, three really, that I think I find really interesting. The first is that they actually have a committed goal of catching cheaters within an hour, which I think is a brave and bold statement to make. And if they could do it, I think that is genuinely an impressive turnaround for pretty much any anti-cheat. The second is introductions of AI and machine learning. This is something that is genuinely very challenging to do from a technical standpoint and something that requires a lot of technical know-how. We're kind of going away from just basic anti-cheat stuff here of analyzing game files, scanning PCs, and trying to put together some data points to figure things out. We're talking about a system that is actively monitoring what legitimate players are doing to identify behavioral anomalies amongst player bases. And then from there, they'd have to confirm whether that behavioral anomaly is because somebody is potentially very talented at the game, or if that person is using some other means of information. Machine learning is no easy feat, and like I mentioned before, we are talking about an anti-cheat that has definitely had a challenging 48 hours, and this is probably something that has been in development for quite some time. And the third thing is finally an updated kernel driver. Now, kernel drivers to me, unless they are operating at ring zero, like Valorant's Vanguard anti-cheat, tend to be quite tricky. I genuinely feel with things like Easy anti-cheat, Battle Eye, and of course Ricochet anti-cheat, that there are always going to be compromises. 
At the bare minimum, a new kernel driver is probably going to make things challenging for anti-cheat providers for the first couple of months in terms of not being detected. That efficiency and effectiveness will likely start slowing down as they get more familiar with what changes have been made, but the upside of this is that potentially this gives time and a buffer zone for the machine learning model in Call of Duty Warzone and in Black Ops 6 to learn more about its player base on console specifically, where cheating is basically non-existent. This means more data points, it means more data sets, and as a combination between server side, client side, a kernel side driver, and of course something like machine learning AI, there should be a better capability of detecting cheaters than we've seen before. Again, all of this comes down to execution. I could be entirely wrong, but I'm going to go out on a limb here and say don't be surprised to see a large number of players banned in Black Ops 6 within the first week or two. Now, it could be that that is a legitimate ban, and it could be that that is going to be something that is very effective. There is a small percentage chance that perhaps they go into hot again and the machine learning models don't have enough information and maybe some false temp bans start coming through. But I reckon they will communicate that this time, as they have with the most recent compromise. As always, folks, let me know your thoughts and feelings in the comment section down below. Drop a like, and a big shout out to all of my paying channel members who support this page directly. If you'd like to become a channel member and get access to all of my settings in Black Ops 6 before anybody else, there is a link in the description below. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.